In a small apartment in Tokyo, the day began not with the sun's rise, but with the dull hum of a computer screen flickering to life. Kaido blinked his eyes open, groggy from another night of minimal sleep. He rubbed his eyes, staring at the digital clock on his desk. It was 2.47 p.m. Time was a nebulous concept in his world, marked more by the rhythms of online gaming and forum posts than by the traditional cycles of day and night. Kaito, a hikikomori, had not left his apartment in nearly two years. The walls of his room were plastered with posters of anime characters and cluttered with stacks of manga. Empty ramen cups and soda cans littered the floor, a testament to his solitary lifestyle. The once vibrant young man had receded into a shell, his only connection to the outside world being the internet. He stretched and rolled his chair towards his computer, his primary portal to the universe. With a few clicks, he logged into his favorite MORPG, where he was known as Shadow Reaper, a high-ranking player in a renowned guild. Online, he was a different person, confident, skilled, and respected. His guildmates greeted him enthusiastically as he joined the voice chat. Shadow Reaper, we need you for the raid, a voice crackled through his headset. I'm here. Kaido replied, his voice steady and calm. He donned his headphones, immersing himself in the game. Hours slipped by unnoticed as he led his team through dungeons, defeated powerful monsters, and strategized their next moves. The thrill of victory and the camaraderie of his guild filled the void that the real world had left in his heart. But the high was fleeting. As the raid concluded and his guild mates logged off, reality crept back in. Kaido removed his headset and leaned back in his chair, staring at the ceiling. His stomach growled, reminding him that he hadn't eaten since yesterday. With a sigh, he shuffled to the kitchenette, where he grabbed another cup of instant ramen. He filled it with hot water and waited, the minutes stretching into an eternity. While waiting, he checked his phone, seeing a missed call from his mother. Guilt gnawed at him. His family tried to reach out regularly, but he rarely answered. It was too painful, too much a reminder of the life he once had and the people he had shut out. He knew they were worried, but he didn't know how to explain the overwhelming anxiety that gripped him whenever he thought about stepping outside. The ramen was ready. He ate mechanically, his mind drifting. He thought about the days before he became a hikikomori, school, friends, aspirations, but those memories felt like they belonged to someone else. After finishing his meal, he returned to his computer, seeking solace in the familiar glow of the screen. Late into the night, he received a message from an old friend, Hiroshi. They had lost touch after Kaido's withdrawal, but Hiroshi hadn't given up on him. The message was simple. Hey, I miss you. Let's talk. Kaido's fingers hovered over the keyboard, uncertainty paralyzing him. He wanted to respond, to bridge the chasm that had formed between him and the world outside, but fear held him back. What if he had nothing to say? What if Hiroshi didn't understand? He closed the message, retreating into the safety of his virtual existence. Yet, the seed of connection had been planted. The following days were a blur of gaming and half-hearted attempts to engage with his surroundings. Hiroshi's message lingered in his mind, a beacon of hope and anxiety. One evening, Kaido found himself staring at his reflection in the computer screen. His eyes were hollow, his face gaunt. He realized that he couldn't continue like this forever. He didn't want to. Summoning every ounce of courage, he reopened Hiroshi's message and typed a response. I miss you too. Let's talk. Hiroshi's reply was swift and warm. They arranged a call, and as the screen connected, Kaido saw his friend's face for the first time in years. They talked awkwardly at first, but soon the conversation flowed. Hiroshi shared stories of their classmates, his adventures, and his mundane life. He listened patiently as Kaido spoke about his struggles, his fears, and his daily routine. For the first time in a long while, Kaido felt seen. The conversation extended late into the night, rekindling a spark of hope within him. It was a small step, but it was a step nonetheless. The road ahead was uncertain and fraught with challenges, but Kaido realized he didn't have to walk it alone. As he logged off, he looked out the window. The city lights twinkled in the distance, and for the first time in years, they seemed to beckon him. He wasn't ready to face the world outside just yet, but he knew that day would come, and when it did, 
he would be ready to take that step, one small victory at a time. In his room, surrounded by the remnants of his isolation, Kaito felt a glimmer of hope. The journey of a hikikomori was a lonely one, but with each connection he rebuilt, he began to find his way back to the world he had once left behind. If he would turn back, we don't know.